Welcome back to my channel. If you guys are new here, my name is Jess. I am a third grade teacher in Southern California. And if you've been here for a while, you know that I make classroom vlogs a lot. And I put a lot of stuff kind of like all just randomly smushed in together. And I was thinking about it recently and I was thinking that it was probably pretty hard for you guys to A, find a video if you've already watched it and know what's going to be in it. Like if you're looking for a specific idea, you don't really know where to go back to. And then also whenever I post a video, it's kind of hard to know what's going to be in it because most of them are just a day in the life of a teacher where I just talk about a bunch of different stuff. So I was thinking it might be helpful for you and then easier for me too if I just made shorter videos that were more concise and about one particular thing rather than always having a bunch of different things. I'll probably still have some of those too, but I'm gonna try to just do like a really quick, like four to five minute video about a particular um, thing that I wanna share with you guys. So today we played this really fun game about the associative property of multiplication with area. And that's kind of a tricky concept and the kids last year really struggled with it and mine started to struggle with it yesterday with a lesson we did and today's was kind of practicing the skill that we learned yesterday. So instead of just having them do a worksheet and then do their Zern, I wanted to share with you guys something that I used instead and the kids went crazy for it. They loved it and as I was walking around I was really able to help all of them because they were able to work independently with this game and then the kids that weren't it was really obvious to tell when they needed help so I could go around and help them. So I'm gonna flip you guys around and show you guys what that game looks like. Okay so I would just went ahead and set up one of the mats so that I could really easily show this to you guys. Um, these mats are dry erase mats from I want to say either oriental trading or really good stuff. I can't remember which one. Um, but you don't actually have to have these. You could just print out um, a grid template or just use regular like grid paper and put it in a sheet protector so the kids could write on with expo marker and that way they could practice over and over and you don't have to keep printing it. So basically each kid was in a group of two. Each group got a deck of playing cards and then one of the grid posters and then they all have whiteboard markers anyways like we use them all the time with their whiteboards um, and that's all they needed. So they took the deck of cards and they split them in half. It didn't have to be exactly perfect, just as long as they eyeballed it and it was about the same. And then each of them put their deck next to them. So I just have it set up like this and then each kid was sitting on either side of the mat. So then at the same time, they would flip over one card from their pile and then see what the two cards are. If it was a king, queen, joker, or an ace, then I just told them to have it be a 10. So then when they flip the cards over, those two numbers are the two side lengths for their rectangle. So they'll draw their rectangle with their expo marker on the grid, label the side lengths, and then find the area, which is what I'm realizing now I didn't do. So I would have them write six times four equals 24. And then since we're practicing using the associative property, I had them rewrite it on another side of the mat. So six times four equals, and then I had them underline which number they were going to be breaking apart. So this one we chose six, we broke that into three times two and then rewrote it with the parentheses. And then we moved the parentheses to the other set of numbers and saw what other two side lengths we could make. I didn't have room to draw it on here for you guys, but whatever other two side lengths we came up with, then they would create that rectangle, draw it, label it, and then find the area and make sure it was the same area as their original rectangle. And then that was it. So then they would put those two cards aside and then do the whole thing over, flip over the cards. I really liked this for a couple different reasons. One, the kids found it so fun and exciting that they just kept wanting to play. So they were getting a lot of practice in because they were getting a lot of different side lengths. And then I also really liked it because I didn't have to be um, giving them the problems. They had unlimited problems because they were getting them from the deck of cards. So it gave me a lot of time to sit there with the kids who were having trouble and really explain it to them without the other kids having to just sit there waiting for me to move on to the next problem. So sometimes with games like Kahoot, I find that that's an issue because they have to sit there and wait after they answer and they have to wait until the other kids are done or until the time runs out, which I usually put either 60 seconds or 120 seconds. So if they finish it within, you know, 20 to 30 seconds, then they're sitting there waiting for the majority of the time. I don't like that. So I like that with this game, they were able to move independently and work at their own pace. And then I was able to walk around and help them as needed. I also really like that the materials that you need are not expensive. So I actually found the deck of cards at the Dollar Tree. So I think I bought one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, I bought 12 packs, so it was 12 bucks. And then the posters from, I can't remember where they're from, but I will look it up and find it and link it down below for you guys. But either Oriental Trading or really good stuff, I got from my um, Renathon money last year, which is a fundraiser that we do. 
but you don't have to have those. You could just use regular grid paper and I would definitely put it in a sheet protector so they can play over and over without wasting the paper. And then obviously the expo marker you would need if you did it that way and that's all you need. And the kids loved it. They begged me to play again tomorrow. So I'm gonna see if we can kind of tweak this a little bit for our lesson tomorrow and play something similar. And that's it for this video. I just wanted to share that game with you guys really quick. Let me know down below what you guys think of trying this new style of video where I just share like one little thing with you guys. I hope that it'll be easier for you guys to find different videos later. Like people will message me sometimes and be like, oh, what video was that one thing that you mentioned in? And sometimes I don't remember. So I'm hoping that this will help you guys find stuff easier and get good ideas back into your classroom faster. So let me know what you guys think. I hope that you like this game. If you try it, definitely let me know. And I will see you guys soon. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>